Please let me know if you can hear me. Oh my dears. These Sundays come round very quickly, don't they? Oh my goodness. I have an awful lot of comments already. Um, just refresh my screen and then we'll get to those. Oh, there's lots of you in here. <laughs> Please let me know if you can hear me okay. Okay. Let's see who have I got. So, uh, Jeannie, hello. Good morning from Washington State. Hello, Jeannie. Anna Karen, hello. Hi, Dan. Mal, Missy, Esther, Silver Stitches, Saskia. Uh, Betsy and Sandy and then oh great you can hear me that's fantastic uh, hi Patricia hi Katinka uh, it's lovely to see you all oh my goodness I have just had a um, quite a sight just come past me okay <laughs> on to other things right so uh, <coughs> excuse me working on my stained glass uh, hi, Caroline. Hi, Christine. So, working on, let me show you the mock up because I'm really, 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 really naughty at, uh, at, at you know, not showing mock ups. <laughs> hi, Cheryl. Let's turn this around. So, I'm working on this one, which is my Lord of the Rings stained glass. And I'm doing the black around this section here. So, going to get busy. I'm, so I'm doing in all the black first, if I can. You never know. I might get bored with it and change to a different colour. And, uh, oh, blimey, 30 of you already. Uh, hi, Cassia Pier. Okay, so this has been stitched on 18 counts. Uh, two over one, full cross. Oh, my clip's come loose. Just click my fabric up. Try that clip a bit better. Uh, I've also had a message from Catherine on Facebook. She will be popping in if she can, but she's got visitors at the moment. But if not, she will catch up with us all on catch up. Oh, thanks, Silver Stitcher. I will wait for your email and then show your progress. Andy's just finishing up putting the dishes away. Hope everybody has had a lovely week. I have had a fairly productive one. Um, and I've had a, the later part of the week has been getting stuff done. <laughs> you know, those little admin odd jobs that you really, really need to get done. So it's been a bit of a busy one. But the end will justify the means, I hope. I've got a valuation booked in for the house. I've got bank statements on order. And I've got a few bits, other bits sort of done. The mediation finally went ahead. Um, and, yeah, I, uh, I think that things are getting there. So, yeah. So what's everybody else stitching on? Do let me know. And uh, I will share for you. Um, I uh, lost another two and a half pounds at Fat Club this week. So two stone left to go or 28 pounds. So I'm on a countdown now. So the blip of last week has, uh, has gone. I think, you know, it was sort of a multitude of things. I was very stressed. Um which can have an impact on you in so many ways. Mal, Mal loves a good productive week. Yep, so do I. I. I actually have this real feeling of accomplishment and I've done quite a lot, including 13 hours of overtime this week. <laughs> so 
I don't know where it, all the energy is coming from, but, you know. Uh, Rosemary High. Uh, Cheryl, cross-stitching on Disney, 11 Count. Sandy, Daydream by Heather Edwards, Pain-Free Crafts, 27.68%. Uh, uh, Patricia started a saltire. Lovely. Well done, Patricia. Oh, that's in the wrong place. Okay. Ah, oh, thanks, Patricia. Dan is stitching on Country Living, Thomas Kincaid, Haid. Uh, Rosemary working on Morning in the Pine Forest. Fantastic. Is that an email that I have? Missa is knitting today. Fantastic. Okay. Silver Stitches has just sent me an email with a picture. She's working on uh, Amy Stewart's Birds and Birds and Bees or Birds and Butterflies. I can't remember what it's called. Do apologize. But we have a bird's head. She's fantastic. She's looking great. Well done, you silver stitches. Keep on going. Uh, oh, Missy, you're doing a fair isle cardigan. Lovely. Well done. Uh, Saskia, congrats on the weight loss. Still stitching the printed Gryffindor piece. Not tired of it yet, but I'll have a more blocky one out as well if the confetti hell gets to you. Yeah. Mal had a finish yesterday, working on pulling out the gridding floss, then a good wash. Uh, oh, Jean, uh, Hayde Speechcomber's Bounty. Uh, it's another Amy Stewart, isn't it? Max Colours. Fantastic. Hi, Renee. Good afternoon from Georgia, USA. Working on Blanket Fort by Amy Stewart, 21.7%. Amy Stewart is the, uh, the definitely the um, artist of choice this week, isn't she? And Katinka too. Uh, putting up lists in my little cake shop by Amy Stewart. Ah, uh, yes, thank you, Silver Stitches. Birds and Blooms, that was it. I knew it was birds and something. It was just the something part I couldn't remember. <laughs> So I'm guessing that lots of you have seen the poll I put on the community page about doing a monogamous May to get my princess finished. Uh, I will. It, it it certainly looks like get her to a finish is winning, um, but I will reserve the right to switch out to another piece from time to time if I get burnt out by it, but. As of, as of last night, as I worked on her yesterday, as of last night, if I was to finish her during, if I didn't put in another stitch, and then I finished her during May, I'd need to put in 1,300 stitches a day. It's a bit of a reach because I don't get to stitch lots every day especially if I'm in the office so um, but I don't know what I'm going to get done between now and the 1st of May so uh, Silver Stitches yes I said stay in rotation because that's I find monogamy hard mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not so bad actually with monogamy when I've got a goal to meet. Um, so, but I will see how it goes. You know, but there, there might be sort of a day or two that I need to move out. But to be fair with it, the bottom section, there's a quite a few different bits. So I could move to a different part and still, you know, it, it still be fresh, as it were. Any chance of a post tea broom, my sweet? Uh, yeah. So, this one has had a, got an awful lot of black stitches in it. I've still got another 87,000. Uh, 
<laughs> so I could be doing the black outlines for a while. But yeah, back to my with Princess. 1,300 stitches does seem to be a stretch. Um, but I think I've got quite a few colours that are very near to a zero on it. And I think when you get very close to a zero and then you get that zero, it kind of does spare you on a bit as well. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, my focus is flashing in and out on... Let me just move the camera up a wee bit. Sometimes that does help. Okay, let's try that, Patricia, see if it's any better. I I've, I restart my phone before I do the lives every week, but it still misbehaves. But this phone is starting to misbehave anyway. It's running down its battery very quickly at the moment. And I don't know why, and it's annoying me. This phone is, is, is only about a year old as well. Let's see if things improve, eh? I also try not to move up towards the phone if I can. Oh, Patricia, by the way, I got your email. Um... It was on my list of admin stuff to do that I haven't got round to yet to reply to you. Um, but, yeah, thanks for that. I will uh, I will let you know accordingly. And uh, Hannah's quite excited. <laughs> ah, great stuff. That's good. So we've had a bit of a fun week here in the UK. Um, it's been sunny and we've had warm days and then we've also had freezing cold days. Um, I've had times where I've been absolutely frozen. Uh, Oody on, thick socks on, heating on, heating back on because I just can't get warm. Which has been an absolute pain in the neck. You wouldn't think that we were in April. No, Andy, uh, on Wednesday, last uh, this last Wednesday, uh, had to uh, scrape ice off his windscreen. I think it was this Wednesday. But no, it's just all very bizarre at the moment, the weather. Hot and cold. Uh, I've been into the office once this week, and then on Thursday I went and did my volunt. What, what we have a volunteer day. We have two a year, and this particular volunteer day uh, I went to help at a food distribution centre. It's freezing in the mornings, but warm in the evenings where we've been. It's been cold all day long uh, for me some of these days. Uh, self stitches. Hi, Mandy. So, yeah, so Thursday I went off and did a day in a food distribution centre and helped to pack uh, orders for foodstuffs that go to schools and uh, community centres and places that provide people with hot meals. Um, you know, and had a good sort of tidy up and, you know, did a bit of sort of, you know, yes, we we do a little bit of cleaning, but, you know, we obviously as well help, help sort out food donations and so on, which has been quite nice. So I did that and I compared last year's pictures to this year's and, oh, my goodness, what a difference. <laughs> you can definitely see my weight loss, put it that way. Dan, we were in the 80s two days ago, and today we're in the 30s. A good stitching day today. Yeah. 
Oh, blimey, Andy. I've had a good stitching day too because even though I've done overtime today, four hours, um, I've, had, I've actually done 1,700 stitches on this piece already. So, uh, but I'm kind of getting stitches in because next weekend is when my kitchen comes. So, um, I'm, uh, you know, trying to get ahead because my stitching time may be limited with having kitchen fitters here. Uh, same in Germany, got to be careful not to catch a cold with the fluctuations. Yep. You know, some days I just want to throw open the windows and let the fresh air in. And then I put my head out the door and think, nah, it's too cold for that. <laughs> stay inside, stay warm. Was it Wednesday you had to scrape ice off the car, love? Yeah. It was. Yes, I thought we got over all the ice nonsense. Obviously not. Silver stitches, I'm in bed most of the time, so I'm warm anyway. <laughs> That's one way to stay warm, as long as you can stitch, eh? That's, that would be for me, as long as I can stitch. And Lauren wandered down earlier on and, ooh, what are you working on, Mum? She doesn't, uh, you know, do um, stitching herself, but she's often interested to know what I'm working on. It's usually met with an, ooh. <laughs> But no, she's not caught the stitchy bug just yet. I've now done the two big arch sections at the top of this as well. So all of the, the biggest block stitching is all done, which I was quite pleased about finish that off today and of course with it being block stitching I don't have to think about it and I can just fire away lobbing stitches in it's quite quick <laughs> I haven't got any model stitching at the moment. Hoping to get some more. Just knock off. And we've had a quiet weekend, really, this weekend, haven't we, love? Well, yeah. Mm. 
not been much happening. Popped out to the supermarket yesterday. But generally speaking, it's been pretty quiet. It's quiet now. <laughs> no one's saying anything. I know, it's marvellous. <laughs> quiet, the girls are upstairs. It's just me and you down here. Oh, yeah. Peace time. Marvellous. <laughs> yes, but I'm pretty sure we need to be saying something because otherwise your viewers may be a little bit bored. <laughs> I don't know what though. No, me neither. Maybe they've got some suggestions. Let's ask them. Mm. Has anybody out there got a few ideas of things we can we can natter about while the Ask us anything. Yeah. You need to do a step-by-step -step video showing how you roll up your fabric, please. I have a huge one to do and I can't because I can't get the fabric right. It's driving me mad. No problem, Patricia. I can certainly sort that. Do you stitch, you stitch on a hoop? I think you do, don't you? I think we've talked about hoops. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got to go to my grandson's birthday party. I will finish watching later. May everyone have a wonderful stitching week. No worries at all, Caroline. Do enjoy the party. How old is your grandson? And do wish him a happy birthday from all of us too. I'm sure nobody would object to that. Hoops and Q snaps, right? Okay, okay. I don't use Q snaps, but it would be the same. You know, I'd probably use a similar method, but I don't know if you've seen uh, Needle Needle Ninja has a video about large pieces and Q snaps and how she handles the excess fabric. So if you search out for the channel Needle Ninja, um. You know, she uses Q snaps as I don't. So uh, I may have to go to doctors this week. I hate going to the doctors. Snap. I hate going to the doctors too. I don't think I could stitch any other way now than with a hoop and two-handed, even if I haven't got my Lowry, because I usually tend to, you know, when I'm in work, I tend to prop my work on a little table or on my knee so I can carry on stitching two-handed. Saskia would love to know about everyone's age and years of experience in cross-stitch, if you lovelies don't mind. Well, I can start the ball rolling on that one for you, Saskia. I am 49, and I started cross-stitching when I was 14. I've been able to knit since I was 8 and crochet since I was about 10 or 11. But cross-stitching for me started at 14. And I did some tapestry as well, so that would be 35 years of experience. No props, Patricia. If you can't find the video, give me a shout and I'll send you an email link. Okay, so Mal, just turned 38, started cross-stitching early teens. Her mum made a pick out a summer project. 
Betsy, 65 in June, stitching since 14. Dan, 65 and started stitching at nine. Missy, 45 and started stitching at seven and knitting at five. Renee, 55, and I've only been cross-stitching for four years and obsessed with full coverage. Oh, welcome to our world. Sandy is 71. My granddad taught me when I was 12. Your granddad, that's interesting, Sandy. He must have been an absolutely wonderful man. Uh, the reason I say that is, is that it's not common for men to be involved in handicrafts. Uh, Christine, or oh, certainly wasn't, you know, if you're 71 now, we're talking a good sort of 60 years ago, and back then it definitely wasn't uh, common for men, was it? Christine was 46, started stitching at 13, had a 10-year break when the kids are small, going to learn to crochet this year. Fantastic. Oh, you all come through in spades, don't you? Silver Stitch is 43 and started about two and a half years ago. Patricia is 57 and has been stitching since she's about 17. So there you go. What's your experience and age and things, Saskia? You must join in too. <laughs> Sandy, he also taught me to knit and crochet. Brilliant. My granddad taught me about coal mines and snooker. I think the cat's been sent down. Yeah, here she is. Uh, Anna Karen, 56, stitching since age nine, knitting since age nine, crochet since six. Karen, Carol Ann, 75, on May the 1st, stitching since 12 years old. Mandy, I'm 53 and I've only started cross stitching about eight months ago and loving it. Been knitting since 13, although I still find sewing up hard and crochet about three years ago. Yeah, that's the only problem with knitting, isn't it? Finishing. Saskia. Saskia turned 30 last year, started cross stitch because she accidentally purchased a cross stitch kit instead of a diamond painting. Happiest of accidents. That was about four years ago and also knits and diamond paints. Do you know what? That is the happiest of accidents, isn't it? Cassia Pia, 39. Started cross stitching in August 2020. Not counting the bit during elementary school. Yeah, I probably did some during my early school years as well, but my first kit and project was a Christmas gift when I was 14. I think I was 40. I was 13 going on 14, I think. It was my birthday in the January. Mal, I also learned to knit and crochet about 16 is something to do during my all my choir competitions. Fantastic. Uh, Jamie, I, I'm 61, started about three years ago and love full coverage as well. Caroline also knits and crochets and got to have your hands busy to feel productive. Yep. Silver Stitches re doctors did ask for a phone call when I described the problem. The reception said it sounded like something I had to go to the doctors for. Frustrating. Yep. That's annoying, that uh, Silver Stitches. I also diamond paint and write. Fan fiction, isn't it, that you do uh, silver stitches? Saskia, a happy one indeed. My crafty stuffed cubbies exploded. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a standing joke in this house that I've cross stitched in every room. Proof, case in point, when we were clearing out the kitchen cupboards, I found a cross stitch kit in the kitchen cupboard. And in the bathroom, I regularly find uh, orcs are kicking around on the bathroom floor. So, you know, cross stitches everywhere in this house. <clears throat> I've got some in my work bag. 
uh, you know, when I took my princess in, so I certainly keep myself busy. My stitching's concerned in every room. Girls have got some in their bedrooms. I've got, even got some that's hung up in the hallway. I've got some in my room. So. Oh, and the conservatory. The conservatory's full. Got all my cones in it. <laughs> oh, why is this thread not coming off? Get rid of that. Okay. Uh, silver stitches. Yes, pride and prejudice. I love Mr. Darcy. I loved him before Colin Firth emerged dripping wet from a lake. <laughs> Saskia, look at you. I only have one room for myself. Um, well, I technically should only have one. The trouble is, though, with this stuff is that it does escape <laughs> all over the house. So... Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, let's have a look. Dripping wet. I also love Pride and Prejudice, one of my favourite love stories. Nicola, what do you do with your finished projects? I will freely admit that sometimes my finishes end up in the craft box. Yeah. Uh, some of them are gift. Uh, some I have even been known to sell in the past. Uh, some I keep. And some, yes, end up sort of staying. Some I keep some, you know, frame, put up and finish. And some, yes, uh, end up um, in the craft box awaiting a finish. I, I tend to do them, but don't think about what I'm going to do with them. That makes sense. Mandy, what's everyone's favourite count? Ada, in it, linen, even weave, and how do you manage when eyesight? Not great. Uh, well, for me, I don't mind what count, but my very maximum would be 28 count, and I've only got one project that's on 28 count, and that's Pandemic. Um. 25 is my go-to for even weave. 18 is my go-to for Ada. Um, but really, I don't mind. I'm not fussy. <laughs> and some I lose. Yeah, that's right, Patricia, because I still haven't come across Avarice yet, but I will. I know she's in this house somewhere. Mal makes sense. I pick images even I like even if they aren't really my decor style. So I know that I will they will never end up framed and hung up. Yeah. Uh Saskia same, tries to show them on Insta, then they go in my cubbies. Most of the time it's the process I enjoy the most. Yes, yeah, spot on. I'm very much a process stitcher, which is why. I don't mind um, doing the model stitches. I don't really care what the subject matter is. Um, because it's the process for me. Okay, so you're getting some answers here, Mandy. Keep coming out of focus again. Ugh. So... Uh, silver stitches. Uh, oh, she's replied there to Saskia. Oh, silver stitches, eight, 14 to 18 count, Ada, 32 count, Linen. Uh, Renee, 25 count, Lugana. 18 count, Ada is easier though on the eyes. Saskia, 14 to 18 count most of the time. 
15 is 25 or 28 count even weave and holster comments she's giving away all of her finishes now i'm stitching on things that i'd like to keep Silver stitches, I lost an entire cross stitch threads and all. Ugh, I hope I can replace it with 16 or 18 count. Um, I was originally stitching it on 14 count from Hade as a material pack. Sandy uh, loves 25 count even weave or linen 32. And Patricia is 16 or 18 count and 36 or 28 count even weave. Now, the other part of your question there, Mandy, was, was about how about seeing it. Um, I've got, I suffer mainly with tiredness and my eyes, when they are tired, I do tend to struggle. So, um, I ended up, I've bought sort of a clip-on magnifier that clips onto my desk or onto my table, should I say. Um, and if I'm stitching a pale colour on a small count, I absolutely need that magnifier. Um, you know, so... I know some people have got, like, mag eyes, you know, the glasses things, but with my glasses being very focal, they don't work for me. Uh, or I've not found any that do work for me, so... Hi, Adria. Saskia says, so far my eyes are doing okay, but I take lots of breaks. Also minding my arms, shoulders and wrists. Yeah, I take regular breaks too. I can sit here for a while stitching, but then I'll stop stitching for a few minutes and look at something else. Silver stitches, I want to get it from Hade as a material pack. I originally got everything from Lakeside. Yeah, I think Hade have reopened material packs uh, there, uh, silver stitches, so you should be you should be good for that. I'm sorry, I know that the um, Zoom is doing the thing again. There's not a lot I can do about it, I'm afraid. I'll just try moving my frame slightly over so my hand's not wobbling away over it. Okay. Uh, Patricia, have a floor stand magnifying light stand with a gooseneck. Couldn't stitch without it. Yeah, my magnifier's got a gooseneck as well. That's the word I was looking for. Um, but I don't need it very often. It's just really when my eyes are tired. And sometimes that can be last thing at night. Sometimes it can be first thing in the morning. It's it's really sort of, you know, dependent on how I'm doing. Betsy, so 36 count linen or 18 count Ada gal. She wears trifocals normally and have to use readers on the tip of the nose to, to stitch. Funky looking thing I am. <laughs> Yeah, I've tried an extra pair on the on the end of my nose, and I just it, they just don't work for me. I I don't know why. But the last time I went and had my new glasses, uh, I said to them, you know, look, I do a lot of stitching. Can we please make sure the prescription takes that into account? And they did. So. I have got dry eyes as well, and I really should have some eye drops, but I just dislike the idea of eye drops. It's why I could never have contact lenses as well. And and the reason why I, I have the dry eyes is because I spend my time working at a computer. I wouldn't mind if I watch TV, but I don't. <laughs> if 
usually just listen to something on YouTube and stitch away. What do you guys do when you stitch? Is there, you know, a particular... I, we were talking, Andy and I were saying about how, you know, I've stitched in the car. Does any, do any of you do things like that? Sandy says, I think I'm lucky at my age. I just use readers three and a half to four. Very lucky, Sandy. Oh, let me see you listen to music. I tend to listen to, you know, some kind of crime documentary or something on YouTube. Occasionally music, but mainly I listen to some speech. Silver Stitches puts on YouTube or binge watch something on a streaming platform uh, or what's recorded. I'm catching up on the Great British Sewing Bee. Never watched that. Uh, I usually to listen to music or have something on YouTube to listen to. Yep. Betsy listens to YouTube. Saskia binges Frost Tube and almost up to date with my channel. Cool. Uh, Kirsty definitely stitches in the car until you get travel sick. Uh, I'm fortunate I don't suffer uh, travel sickness. Thank goodness. Uh, Anna Karen binge watches movies and series that you've watched before. Yeah, I do that as well sometimes. Uh, Netflix at the moment is showing Unforgotten, and I love Unforgotten. Um, it's showing the first four seasons. It's also showing Life on Mars and a few other bits and pieces, which I'm enjoying. Uh, Renee watching Floss Tube, can't get enough of it yet. Yeah, there's loads out there. Uh, Patricia, I'm actually nearly finished Pride and Prejudice, been binge watching today, but usually YouTube. I think we can just sort of get hunkered down in our little corners, can't we, with everything we need around us and a, a drink on hand and, you know, just crack on and stick in our own little world. Patricia's usually driving, so she'd get in trouble if stitching in the car. <laughs> yeah, don't don't do that, Patricia. No responsibility is accepted. <laughs> I took this piece the last time I stitched in the car and actually found it harder stitching on 18 count than I did stitching on 25. It just said that 25 was easier to stitch on in the car. So lesson learned. I've crocheted in the car as well. Sandy's watching Poldark again on Netflix. I don't think I've ever watched that. Midsummer Murders is a good one as well on ITV Player. Or ITVX or whatever it is they call it these days. Like Midsummer Murders. Although I like to watch the older ones, not the newer ones, the John Nettles ones. I have a few YouTube subscriptions, and when they pop up with a video, I watch them. And then, you know, because obviously I work from home, I can listen to YouTube as well while I work if I'm working on cues. So. Anna Karen, this week has been the Gilded Age. Can you girls having a chat upstairs? Don't know what about. 
<laughs> Mal, speaking of hunkering down and stitching between the footrest and the coffee table and my stitching stand, I literally have a barricade. Fantastic. I have a stitching spot which will be tied if anybody sits in it. <laughs> it's just the end of a sofa with, uh, you know, my the sofa arm is on this side. And sometimes the cat comes and sits next to me, cuddles up to me. And everything is set here where I need it. My light's at the back of the sofa so I can move that about. I've got my computer on a table, a little folding table in front of my uh, sofa so I can move that about. And I have a music stand which holds my paper patterns and... My other odds and ends, I need like needle minders, spare needles, scissors, and my tablet. <laughs> hey, Andy. Hang on. What? Silver Stitcher says I'm the Sheldon Cooper of the stitching world. <laughs> Bazinga. You won't get that, but they will. No, I don't watch the Big Bang Theory. Well, I know who Sheldon Cooper is. So, yeah, so I have my little routine and places. I have my stitchy times. And at, at the side of the sofa, I've got all of my projects and floss. And I'm pretty sure Andy just looks at it and tuts as he walks past to himself. Uh. Can you go upstairs and just find out what's going on, please? Because I'm hearing some very concerning conversation up there. <clears throat> Mum says it sounds concerning. But well, can you go up, please? Because I don't forget I'm still streaming. What are you talking about? Oh. Well, just keep it down a little bit because Mum's on a live stream. Yeah? Shut the door or something. Instead of saying about beating up or something. They're just talking. Oh, they're just loud then. Yes. Uh, come on. Get in focus. What are Andy's hobbies? Andy, what are your hobbies? Apart from the village idiot. I don't have any at the minute, apart from that. That's about it, really. Well, you you follow the football, don't you? Yeah, less said about that today, the better. <laughs> yeah, follows the football. Uh, eating, could that be considered a hobby? You do a lot of that. Unfortunately, I do, yes. <laughs> well, I have to eat. I mean, you know... Probably not all the stuff I actually do eat. There we go. Uh, what else do you do? Uh, you watch a bit of YouTube as well, don't you? Yeah, I guess. I guess, yeah. I'm, I'm really struggling, to be honest with you, because, you know, <laughs> I just don't have anything else at the moment. I think I'm your biggest uh, hobby, aren't I? I would never call you a hobby. <laughs> That's life. actually very derogatory. All right, okay. So I, I, I'm your lifelong passion. That'll do me. <laughs> I actually thought that was someone outside my house. Yeah, they, they, they are gobby. They're both upstairs, but obviously they, they are not quiet. <laughs> not a sports fan myself, does he read? No, he doesn't read. Apart, He just watches YouTube and reads Facebook, but, you know doesn't pick up a book oh music you like music and we used to go to gigs quite a lot but we don't tend to get out very much to gigs and music now because andy's too busy filming for his channel uh, andy being peacemaker again yeah always and wonderfully said andy <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, they've all of a sudden shut up. <laughs> Peace reigns. I've never been to a concert. I almost went to one, but then COVID struck and I was devastated. Me and Andy used to go quite a lot, um, certainly pre-COVID. Uh, we've only been to, I think, one since COVID. Subways? Hang on. I can't, uh, what? I'm sorry. I'm just saying, have we, is it only one concert we've been to since COVID? Yes. All right, I was right then. Okay. But, but as you were. Um yeah, we've only been to one since COVID, but we went to quite a lot pre-COVID. Saw Louis Capaldi before he was big and famous. Uh, and who else? Sam Fender before he was big and famous. I've seen Def Leppard four times, I think it's four times. Nothing like going to a concert to a live music. You're into symphonic metal. Oh, sounds interesting. I'm very eclectic with my music taste. I will listen to anything. I mean, you know, there isn't a band that I have been to that I didn't enjoy. I mean, like I've said, I mean, the biggest one band I've seen probably is Def Leppard. I've also seen Ultravox and ELO in concert. Then I've seen some of the more modern stuff like uh, Sigrid. Um, obviously, Louis Capaldi, I've seen him three times, met him after each gig as well. No, four times, but met him after three. Um, but I also like, you know, sometimes I'll put Johnny Cash on or you know, Motown music or, you know, some of the 80s synth pop. You know, I, I'm very eclectic. I'll listen to most things. My dad instilled a love of music in me, um... He used to play his records quite a lot on a weekend. My mum would go to my Auntie Susan's out of the way. My dad would get his record player out and he had a big record collection and he'd drink beer and play his records. And uh, I used to listen and sing and, and what have you. I can't sing. Uh, Night Wishing Within Temptation. Oh, try those. Let's see, loves music from 50s to 80s. Don't listen to new music. The band I most like to see live, I grew up listening to them, is Duran Duran. But they're constants. I need, I need to sell a kidney to see. Yeah. Um, I'd have liked to see in the Human League. I mean, I know that they're still tour now, but I'd have liked to have seen them in their 80s heyday. Saskia been to three soundtrack concerts in the last year. Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, Hobbit 1, 
and one with loads of different soundtrack like Star Wars, Pirates of the Caribbean. I'd like to go to the War of the Worlds um, one, but it's very expensive. You're talking a three-figure sum per person. I watched a documentary about the We Are The World song. Oh, yeah, I saw that. It was on Netflix a few weeks ago. Now, Bob Geldof walked in the room and said, this is what you're singing for. You know, and some of them, they were like, who's this guy? <laughs> uh Yes, me too, uh, Silver Stitches. I remember listening to it as a child in school, the original Richard Burton one. <clears throat> Dan, I see every Depeche Mode live show they're touring this year. Depeche Mode are very good as well. Personal Jesus is a, a big favourite of mine. Only because Def Leppard covered it, but, you know... <laughs> But yes, I quite like and enjoy the silence I liked as well. Very true, Silver Stitches. It doesn't cost the earth to see a movie. Um, but it's getting more expensive now to go to the cinema. I haven't been to the cinema in a long time. But it depends on who you're going to see. If you're going to see a band that's up and coming, you won't pay nearly as much for a ticket. You know, there are times when we've paid five or ten pounds a ticket, you know, and you can't get a movie for that these days. Is it? You're talking about fifteen pound a shot, aren't you? Or I think, like I said, I've not been to the movies in a while. Me and Andy used to quite like going to ice hockey, but even that's become prohibitively expensive. I paid 20 bucks to see Adele on the first US tour. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> Definitely not. I went to see Wonka at the beginning of the year and watched out the cinema happier than when I went in. To me, it was a superbly uplifting movie. Cool. I bet you didn't go to the Wonka experience, though, that everybody was complaining about. <laughs> Let's grab a drink. Shasky, the tickets weren't cheap, but not the three-figure ones. Yeah. We have a Ukrainian orchestra doing these concerts. I'd like to support their work because they're still unable to do that at home. Yeah. Now, the Ukraine's got, you know, a lot of problems at the moment, hasn't it? Andy and I went there in 2018, I want to say. Maybe 2019. Where to? Ukraine. 2019. 2019. And it's a wonderful country. We really loved it out there. Um, the people were absolutely friendly and, you know, we, we did love it. But unfortunately, yeah, it's having a lot of difficulties right now. But what can you do? Not a lot. Not a lot. Headphones are off now, so okay. you can talk. You can talk to me now. I don't like having my headphones on when you're on your live stream, but sometimes I get distracted and, and <laughs> there's all of a sudden things that I, I want to watch. It's okay. 
Well, I know, but I, I, I feel a bit... You're not bound to be on my live stream. You just happen to be in the room, don't you? Oh, Timothy Chalamet, who played Wonka, is in a biopic of Bob Dylan. Oh. Yes, those seem to, he does seem to be up and coming. Um, but also biopics, there seems to be a lot of those around. <laughs> what we had recently, we've had the Elvis one, uh, Elton John one, uh, Bob Marley. Now there's a Bob Dylan one. We had the Queen one a couple of years ago. Indeed. And a few years back we had the Johnny Cash one. Yes, biopic seems to be a, a big thing. The biopic's done well. Yeah, if it's true to the story, that's one thing. But then again, how do we know? Is she shouting at the cat again? Yes, yes, the cat. The cat's in for it right now. <laughs> oh dear, sounds like the cat's in trouble. Oh dear, the cat's in trouble. Cat's always in trouble. Walks on quicks on that cat. What's the matter? Nothing. Yeah, but you're huffing. What's wrong? Nothing. Something gone wrong? No. No, I'm no, fine. Don't worry. Of course I worry. Well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You should worry more about yourself than you worry about me. No. Nope. This, this is after your trouble. You worry, you worry a lot about me and not really much about yourself. And I think that's something you have to, you have to address that sometimes. Even your viewers will probably agree with me on that. It's because I'm an empath. Yeah, well, it's better than being a psychopath. I love Seaman Dickens' adaptation. He's got a cheeky cockney look. Or Terry Pratchett's something that has atmosphere, history, and humour. Good that? call. We need a biopic of Ozzy Osbourne. That'd be fun. <laughs> I agree. That would very much be fun. I'd like to see a biopic of Ozzy Osbourne. Would you? Yeah. Why? Because I think Ozzy's led a very interesting life. Oh, yeah, there's no two ways about that. So why would I not want to see that in movie form? I don't know. <clears throat> I guess it would be quite cool. Just say, big sister was an empath. She's the nicest person on it that you know. Yeah, uh, I took a, a test, a uh, personality test, and um, it told me that I was an empath. You took a personality test. Yeah, I took one at work when I started at, at work, and it showed me that I was an empath. You know, when I started in, in bereavement. Well, if you told me about that, I've, I've, I've almost forgotten about it. Yeah, it's a long time ago. I couldn't believe Ronnie Corbett's golfing partner was Alice Cooper. What a movie that would make. <laughs> Comedian and the rock star. Oh, blimey. That'd be quite cool, actually. <laughs> Are they both dead now? Alice Cooper's not dead. Is he not? Oh, he might have been. 
Surely he's knocking on. He's knocking on, but he's not dead. The US had a reality show with the Osbournes. It was quite the show. Raw turkeys thrown over fences. Yeah, and dogs pooping in the kitchen. And Amy not wanting to be on camera and being blurred out every time that she was in shot. And Ozzy constantly shouting, Sharon! Sharon! <laughs> yeah. It was shown on MTV, if I remember correctly. I remember bits of it. It was funny. And, and he'd go and buy all these burritos. He'd go and buy like 12 burritos at a time and he'd have a fridge full of burritos from his favourite burrito place. Yeah, Quite yeah. funny, Ozzy Osbourne. Don't deny it. Kelly and Jack used to be throwing stuff at one another. God, I think that if they were my kids. Right, you're not knocking Alice Cooper off his perch anytime soon, I don't think. Alice is very much alive, 76 years old. He could live another 30 years. True that. Uh, I believe he owns a restaurant that sells big hot dogs. <clears throat> the Osborne series reminded me of a real-life version of The Young Ones. <laughs> you know, it's very, very true, Adrian, very true. It's quite like The Young Ones. And Bottom. That was a that was a funny series. The Americans might not know what bottom was. Adria's in Budapest. Oh, that, well, to be fair, the Hungarians might not know what bottom was. Very, mm. very, very funny sitcom. I think you had to be you had to, you had to get it to get it, didn't you? It was, yeah. It was one of them. It was very funny, but if you didn't understand it, you probably wouldn't. You had to understand the nuances of British humour. I can't for the life of me remember where it is, but I, I've been to, I've been to the place where Adrian Evanson went to school. I know that much, uh -huh. wherever it was. Hi, and Peggy. I remember, I remember I remember mentioning it in the video. Yeah, we've also been to the bench in Hammersmith. Oh yeah, Bottoms Bench. Yeah, yeah, we've been to that. Lentils falling out the carpet. I unfortunately do know Bottom. Not my favourite show. I preferred Captain Flashheart in Blackadder. Woof! <laughs> <laughs> oh, blimey. <laughs> yeah, that's another classic. British oh, show. definitely. Blackadder. Ah, I do love a bit of Blackadder. My mother never liked it, you know. Didn't she? No, no, my mother hated it. But I don't see why. I just think it was hilarious. <laughs> All apart from the very last episode of Black Adder Goes Forth. Yeah. Which is like the, one of the best. One of the best endings the best ever, isn't it? That's one of the best bits of TV in the world ever. Yeah. My favourite sitcom was The Good Life. It's like The Good Life. It's a little wonderfully pretentious next door neighbour was, the woman next door. Uh, what do they call them? Um, Margot, and how unpretentious her husband was, but he was very henpecked. I loved a good life. Uh, the end of the black adder is giving silver stitches tingles. Just thinking about it. Yeah. No matter how many times you watch it, you always see something you haven't seen before. before. I, I, I mean, if you if you go from the sort of I don't know. Three minutes away from the end, so the bit where the, the bit where they're talking about um, uh, oh, what's his name, C Captain Darling, saying he's saying he's he, he, he'd rather like be be at home and doing all, all this other stuff rather than you know facing the inevitable. If you go from that to the end, there's always a bit in it you haven't seen before that you just happen to notice mm. every time you watch it. No matter how many times you watch it, it's so. Perfectly crafted. Peg, uh, Patricia, my husband loved Only Fools and Horses. 
Yeah, that's another good one. Quite like Johnny Falls and Horses. Granddad's, uh, not Granddad's, Uncle Albert's during the war. <laughs> and when he said, I can speak German, uh, what, what is, is your, your name? name? <laughs> Yeah. And then the, the Gary Gang. Gary? You don't remember that episode? Really? I do, I remember that episode. Can't beat the classics. No. Nope. All you can do is bring them back for a reboot. <laughs> All right, the Vicar of Dibley's got a mention here as well. I never watched an episode, a single episode of the Vicar of Dibley. You are absolutely joking me. Nope. You have never watched an episode... Oh, come on, Nicky. Never seen it. Oh, blimey, you are missing out. <laughs> well, we did like keeping up appearances. Mrs. Bucket. Yeah, it's not Bucket, it's Bouquet. It's Bouquet, the Bouquet residence, lady of the That's house speaking. speaking. That's another one who's knocking on. Hi, uh, hi, since Bouquet, yeah. Apparently, Patricia Routledge was trending on Twitter. Everybody thought that she died. Turns out it was her birthday. 97, 90... 96, I think. 94 or 96, something like that. But it was, she was trending and everybody thought, oh, my God, Mrs. Bucket's, Mrs. Bucket's dead. Nope. Mrs. Happy Bucket. birthday, Mrs. Bucket. Mrs. Bucket's kick the bucket. That's what the headlines will be, you know, when it eventually does happen. Yeah, the, 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 it'll be in the sun or the or star. Yeah, yeah. Keeping up appearances is a, another firm favourite, and then of course Andy's favourite one is open all hours. We know all about that because obviously of because the video, of the video. Yeah, she's still up on YouTube, but I don't know whether it's getting any views anymore. Well, it got me a gecko rouge kit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, falling through the bar, the chandelier dropping on the floor, Batman and Robin coming to rescue the mayor. So many hilarious scenes in Only Fools and Horses. Yep. They don't make them like that anymore. And Trigger's broom that's had, you know, 19 new handles and 12 new heads or something. Not the same broom. Yeah, but Trigger didn't see that, did he? Well, he was a bit thick. He's gone up. <laughs> and like when when you boy see, yeah, I know you're going to say boy see, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And I love the bit in Only Fools and Horses where Dell says he's looking at Raquel and he says, "How many people do you see there, Rodney? Because I see two. And Rodney just says very dryly, "You know what this means? It means either Dell's pissed or Raquel's pregnant." <laughs> Yeah. Hello, I know, and Heidi High. Yep, two other good series there, like those as a kid. Uh, where else did we used to watch? Every Decrease in Circles, which I thought was a bit rubbish. Brush Strokes. Come on, the all time classic, Nikki. How are you not mentioning the all time classic? Go on, False Towers. False towers yeah. Very un PC these days, though. It would never, it would never, it would never, it would never PC. Be on these days, that. It's not that, it's a hamster. Yep, that's the one, Patricia. And, um, okay. oh, the grumpy man. The grumpy man. Uh, what, um, one foot in the grave? That's it, thank you. One foot in the grave. Hey, don't, don't believe, believe it. it. Oh, come on. Right, Faulty Towers. My favourite Faulty Towers episode was The Kipper and the Corpse because it had Jeffrey Palmer in it. Yes, you're very well acquainted with Jeffrey Palmer, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, that's a great line, Silver Stitches, from Faulty Towers. Well, we didn't start it. Yes, you did. You invaded Poland. <laughs> <laughs> Gourmet night. Yeah. <laughs> so many classic moments. Yeah. You can't, you, you, I mean, this is, this is the problem with the internet, right? Because... 
back in back in those days. Oh, well, I mean, I'm sounding old. Back in those days. Right? Well, you are now. You're forty. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. <laughs> I remember that. Okay? I remember that. I'll not remind you that you're nearly fifty. I don't care. Oh, do you not? Well, you could. Um, oh, should I? All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the point you're making is that back in there, everybody watched all these because they were on telly, and the telly was really the only sort of entertainment. Yeah, yeah. these days the internet has kind of diluted it a bit because now you can just watch, you can watch all of them on, uh, online, sure, but there's like loads of other things and so many channels and different True platforms. That. You know, you've got YouTube and you've got Netflix and you've got um, you know, Disney Plus, all sorts of yeah, uh, Hulu, ITVX, and this, this Roku. Back in the, back in those times, Paramount. you were you just had like four channels, maximum four or, or potentially five if we're talking the Channel Five era, and people knew what you're talking about because they only had those five channels to pick from. And now, because there's so many, and yeah. and, and there's there's all this other stuff you know, floating about, thanks to the internet. If someone says, "Well, did you see this? Did you see that?" and you're like, "Well, what's that? I don't know what that is," <laughs> you know. Hi, Laurie. Yep, you did indeed make it. How are you? Hope you're well. We're just talking about classic British sitcoms. They don't make them like that anymore. Certainly don't. They don't make them like they used to, do they? I mean, I suppose they. I suppose they. They still do make them. But it's like I said, the, everything's so watered down now. And of course, you have to be careful mm. because all this, all this sort of political correctness that's that's that in those days just didn't exist, and now it does because people get offended by anything. Yeah. And that's another that's another problem that TV's got. I mean, we don't watch TV. I can't remember the last time the telly went on actually. So. Uh, Peggy, I love Judy Dench. Laurie, I love some mothers do have them. Yeah. Well, have them. Some mothers do have them. Yeah, they, they drop, they drop the, the H at the beginning. Yeah. I think it was. Think uh, what did they call him? Um, what? Well, Frank Spencer. Frank Spencer, that's it. I was trying to think of his surname. See, a lot of these that you're talking about are just before my time because mm -hmm. they were like 70s and 80s. But I still grew up with them because my mother. Still watched them at the you know out, you know years afterwards, yeah. so they're very familiar to me. And, this, and even when even when I'm at, at my parents' house mm -hmm. now, they've got them on UK Gold. You know what I mean, <laughs> or whatever channel. Uh... I don't remember the name of the show, but Judy Dench was making an excuse that her partner came down with the measles and lifted his shirt to check for spots, uh, an excuse that, to avoid be, the party. That's um, Terry that, June, isn't it? No, June. That was June Whitfield, and. Um, that was another good thing. Yeah. Uh, I think we're thinking of a time goes by, which is Judy Dench and Jeffrey Palmer. Ah, oh, good yeah. I don't think it's possible to make that kind of show anymore. People these days are too easily offended. Yeah, That's this it. Yeah, that's problem, yeah. That's exactly right. People get offended at anything. Yep. Yeah. Rosemary, that could be an episode of A Time Goes By, yeah. Some Like It Hot and MASH. Now, I never watched MASH, but I do know of it. Yeah. Thanks to being a Manic Street Preachers fan. Yeah, but you thought that they'd come up with that song originally. <clears throat> yeah, but I didn't know because I, 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 I knew the song because of the band, but I didn't know of the actual yeah. thing because I've never watched it. So, it ain't a half hot mum. Still a good, still a good uh, song though because, you know, yeah. anything by the Manics is good. Man, uh, Dad's Army. Oh, absolute classic. Don't tell him, Pike. They're all gone there. Yeah. Step and son, definitely not PC. <laughs> Can you imagine if someone tried to pitch that as a prank? Oh my pizza? gosh! Not a chance. Wouldn't be a prayer. The um, the Americans watching won't know what the Step is all about. Unless it's been syndicated over there. That was my dad's favourite step. Yeah, I like Step but America, um, Mr. Ed, we used to watch Mr. Ed a lot. Mr. Ed? Yeah, the talking horse. I'm not familiar with that. 
Yeah, it was a very old sitcom that was in the 50s, 60s. It was black and white. And there was Mr. Ed that was the talking horse and his owner was Wilbur. I must admit, I'm not familiar with that one. The only American shows I love are Frasier, Friends and The Big Bang Theory. Never watched any of them. I've seen the odd episode of Big Bang Theory. Uh, love Thy Neighbour, Not PC. Yep. Uh, Stitching Budapest, uh, Adria and Sandy both agree on that one. Yeah. And what was it, Alf Garnet one? Uh, oh, um, uh, oh, uh, oh, what was that called? Do you know, I can't remember what that was called. I know it. I can see it in my head. <laughs> but uh, I can't remember what it was called. No. You silly moo. Oh, what did it call it? What did it call it? What was it? Hang on. The power of Google. Till death do us part. That's it. That's, That's, it. That's it. Brilliant. He's tried to watch Stepton and Son and hated the toxicity of the relationship between them. He didn't find it funny. Yeah. It's 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 like everything. I I there's some stuff I didn't find funny. You know, you find what you enjoy, don't you? It's like everything. I mean, like people think that like certain comedians are funny. Like I don't find find Michael McIntyre funny. What? He's hilarious. He's hilarious. I don't find him funny. I don't find Frank Skinner funny. He's hilarious. I don't find him funny. Are we going to agree on one here? Peter K. Yes, he yes, is hilarious. he's funny. <laughs> he's more of an acquired taste, but he's still funny. I, as female comedians, you not. I don't think you've ever seen anything of her, but Celeste Barber is very funny. No, I don't know that is. She's an Australian lady. You know the, you know when influencers put up a picture of themselves posing in some ridiculous pose. She goes and copies them like as a real woman right. and rips the absolute out of them. No, I'm not familiar with that. In, in my experience, female comedians don't get a, a very good rep anyway, for some reason. Joe Brand was very funny. Didn't like her. Now, you see, there we go. We disagree on that one. I thought she was hilarious, no. you know, but she's no. now very un-PC. Totally unfunny, I'm sorry. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, Celeste Barb is quite funny. So this idea a lot, Midsummer Murders. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anna Karen, Midsummer Murders is heard a lot where she lives. I I used to live in the village where some of it was filmed. <laughs> yes, the Lee. And if you want to see the Lee, just text my channel. Because I've been to it. Or rather, we've been to it because Nicky was with Nicky with, with me. I certainly was. This is why Nikki knows that mm -hmm. Nikki is so familiar with Jeffrey Brown because he used to live in the lake. Jethro was funny in the early days. Never really watched him. Oh, uh, the Cornish guy, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, it was, I've, seen, I've seen him a couple of times. He weren't terribly sort of. Enamored? No. But he was, he was funny in funny bits. Now. Uh, the one I do resist if we're talking comedians. Mm -hmm. I've never seen his appeal, and that's Chubby Brown. Now you see, I find Chubby Brown funny and Mike Reed funny. Uh, well, I, I, I just can't get on board with Chubby Brown. I can't. Uh, uh, I agree with Andy. Michael McIntyre had me in tears of laughter. I adored Victoria Wood from the 80s. Oh, yeah, I'm sure Victoria Wood. Yeah. Sarah Millican has Saskia in stitches, pun intended. Mandy Moran loves Lee Evans. Don't like, I'm not keen on Lee Evans. No, I'm not keen on Lee Evans. I'm not totally keen on Sarah Millican, but I, I, I do like her husband, though, Gary Delaney. I think mm. he's hilarious. The ones I have the most admiration for is Bill Bailey and Eddie Izzard. Oh, oh good old Bill Bailey. Yeah, you've seen Bill Bailey, oh, haven't you? I love Bill Bailey, he's a legend. You know, I, I quite like to see these comedians when they're on Have I Got News For You? Because that's when I find them funny. But just generally, like Sarah Millican, for example, I'm I'm not terribly stuck on her. But if she's on Have I Got News For You, 
It's funny. I think it's the subject matter, isn't it? Yeah. But then again, we like how I got news for you. We were binge watching it, weren't we? I think Chubby Brown's got worse over the years, but the earlier Chubby Brown stuff, some of it was quite funny. But the later stuff... I mean, he is totally no. on PC. There oh, is, completely. There no, he's been no two ways about it. He's been on PC from the start and he's just got worse. He's been banned from so many venues, it's ridiculous. I think his views are out of date. Yeah, I've done something wrong here. And he doesn't even acknowledge that, oh, the, no. that the world has changed. I mean, I mean, okay, you you're probably entitled to all these sort of opinions and whatnot, but you have to you have to realise that, that the world has altered. Yeah. Billy Connolly, yeah. He's, um, I quite like Billy Connolly. Well, he's, he's, he's not... Um, he's stopped now, hasn't he? Because he's, he's got Parkinson's. Yeah, he's now. not terribly well. I think he still appears on, you know, programmes and stuff, but just not as often. He's still knocking around, though. The sketch show comedians, no one was funnier than Ronnie Barker. Yeah, no one could top him for wordplay, facial expressions, wit, intelligence, and even serious acting with porridge. Oh, he, could, he could do it all. Yeah. Yeah. Sandy here says Jim Davidson. You think Jim Davidson was also caught out for being non-PC. And I didn't particularly like Jim Davidson as a comedian, but as a TV presenter when he did Big Break and stuff, I found him quite funny. Yeah. yeah but as a comedian, no. JV. I don't think the Americans will know what big yeah. is. Because the Americans, the, the, that's the funny thing about, about, about if, you, if we're talking about snooker, the Americans haven't got a clue what it is. They, they recognise pool, obviously, because they play that a lot over there. But you show them a snooker table and they're like, what the heck's this? <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's kind of the same thing. Ish. Same principle. Did I just look up and catch me frogging? Yeah, I just had to frog half a dozen stitches. You've had to frog? Yeah, I was only, you know, I was a stitch out. Thank God for gridded fabric. That's how I spotted it. Wow, well, yeah. it's only, only a couple of stitches. It happens. It's probably the most I ever have to frog because I'm usually quite good at picking up my miscounts early. Oh. Les Dawson almost equals Ronnie Barker. Yeah. Les Dawson was a very funny comedian in his day. And he, but he was very, very funny when he was presenting Blankety Blank. Uh, again, the, the Americans will know that by a different name, won't they? That, yeah. Isn't that called something else in America? I think so, yeah. Again, same principle. But... You see... Jim Bowen was quite funny as a presenter on Bullseye, but oh, as a stand-up yes. comedian, rubbish. I didn't think Jim Bowen was very good at all as a stand-up comic, but as a presenter on Bullseye, he was brilliant. Isn't it funny? You think about all these people as well. I mean, we've lost a lot of them in recent years. You know, there are quite a few people who've passed away. And their their particular form of comedy has almost died with them because, like we said, the world is sort of very un-PC these days. And uh, it, very uh, too PC, should, should I say. And, you know, you, you can't say or do anything because you will offend somebody. Well, I just think of it like this. If, if, if someone happened to be sort of cryogenically frozen in the 1970s and woke up now, they would have a serious shock. And when you think about it, it's only 50 years, but a lot has happened in 50 years. 
Oh, yeah. Sketch that makes me laugh in tears, is it? I'm thinking you mean an Andre Previn sketch from Morecambe and Wise. Yeah. Yeah, Morecambe and Wise, their, their Christmas special used to get trotted out every year. Now, here's the thing with them two, right? I only thought one of them was funny. Mm. I, thought, I thought Eric Morecambe was funny, but Ernie Wise weren't. Yeah. I don't know why, but I just thought that was, there, was a, there was a definite disparity between them. Yeah. Laurie grew up watching Carol Burnett. Nothing makes me laugh like that anymore. Yeah. Um... And Stitching Budapest, uh, Adria, Silver Stitches, yes, I'm playing all the right notes, just not necessarily in the right order. It almost reminds me of that of a, um, a sketch by, um, oh, what do you call him? It'll come to me in a minute. Jack Benny. Jack Benny? Yeah, he's an old American comedian. Sort of, the, you know, the 50s and 60s. Right. And he he had like a cheap violin and a Stradivarius, and he was like, uh, you know, the the sketch went along the lines of, I mean, it was it sounded rubbish, and he was like, oh, can you just not tell the difference with my, you know, thousand so many thousands of dollars Stradivarius, you know. Any wise needed Eric, but Eric didn't need Ernie. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like it used to be, is it, though, with comics? Not anymore. Not anymore. I think stand-up comedy is a bit of a dying art these days. It certainly is. I've got a well, friend who does stand-up comedy, but, you know, she was bereaved at, at New Year, and she's she's kind of stopped doing it now because the lady who, who had passed away was like her inspiration. And, you know, people are like, well, you know, you should get back to it, but... You've got to be wanting to do it and ready to do it. And she was very funny, weren't she, Rebecca? Yeah. I mean, it's like I said, I mean, I think comedy is dying out because you, because you can't joke about as many things these days. You, you just have to... No, oh, no, joke about anything, you get lynched. People get offended by all sorts. Even stuff you wouldn't even think is offensive. But they do, and it's, 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 it's daft. Sign of the times, though, isn't it? I don't know. How did we get into this position. Oh, who knows? How did it become such a problem? And the constant making fun of Des O'Connor. If you want me to be a goner, buy me an LP by Des O'Connor. <laughs> I feel we've got a few really good comics in the US. Yeah. Although it asked me to think of an American comedian and I can't. Jeff Allen. Who? Jeff Allen. Who the flip is Jeff Allen? He's the only American comedian I can think of off the top of my head. Oh. Well, Mal... <laughs> He's an old guy. He's quite an old guy. Mal says here... Uh, oh, I've missed the stitch. Okay, I've got enough thread. Mal says here, Taylor Tomlinson is a current favourite. I don't know who that is. Me neither. Me neither. But I, I would definitely recommend Celeste Barber. She did a, she's a couple of stand-up shows on Netflix. She's quite funny. But like I said, she's the one that you see on Facebook all the time that's, that's literally taken the pee out of these, you know, skinny supermodels who were dressed in like a bikini and doing the splits while getting a glass of orange juice or something. Just just search on Facebook for Andy, you'll see what I mean. Um, and her stand-up is really quite funny. She also had a, a show. Um, a comedy, not a sketch show. 
like a sit, it was like a sitcom, but it wasn't a sitcom. I might not be making sense. Right, I'm making sense. Oh, um, another controversial one here in the UK, Mrs. Brown. Mrs. Brown's well, boys. Okay, well, we'll allow that. It's technically Irish, but yes, yes, you're right. Controversial. Yeah, the the Irish are like our our little sidekick, aren't they? I do not normally like ventriloquists, but that sketch is hilarious. Speaking of ventriloquists, here there is an American comedian that I know, Mal, Jeff Dunham. Oh, good old Jeff. <laughs> and we have seen him live at Wembley. He was fantastic. Oh, I love Jeff. And Ahmed, the, de the dead terrorist, showed up. I kill you. <laughs> Brilliant. I do love a bit of Jeff. <laughs> yeah, uh, Ahmed. I quite like um, uh, Bubba J. His hobbies are watching, watching NASCAR, NASCAR and drinking beer, <laughs> and Jose Jalapeno on a stick. The ultimate awesome irony is is that most Americans that, are, that that would you know you, you class as being rednecks are actually like that. <laughs> Yeah, I do apologise if there are any anybody if there's anybody in from the American Midwest or the, the sort of South <laughs> area where you know the rednecks are sort of. Yeah, playing. and Walter, welcome to Walmart. Get your shit. Get out. <laughs> when he had the job as a greeter. Hey, we're on your live stream. You shouldn't be there. I know. But we're not caring. I'm enjoying my live stream tonight. Live stream might not be monetized now. Oh, uh, Peanut. Jeff Fafa. Jeff Fafa. <laughs> and uh, Little Jeff. And Ak did, I loved the sketch when Ahmed's son turned up. And he says, but you're dead. Yes, you took me on a uh, take your kid to work day or something similar. Something along those, those lines. Uh, it was quite funny. Uh, we like a bit of Jeff, don't we? Uh. Yes, I remember us going to see him in London, under. Yeah, that was quite cool. And as we came out of Wembley, because it was at the arena, yeah, yeah, not the not, stadium. Not the stadium, no, it, it, there's a difference. And we walked out into the um, neon run. Do you remember? Yeah. All these people in neon clothing and neon paint. Yeah, Jeff Dunham, legend. Well, it's certainly been a very mixed conversation tonight, hasn't it? This is this is this is this is, this is what you this is what I I get for saying get get your viewers to <laughs> to suggest the topics. Careful what you wish for, isn't it? Yeah, but it's been brilliant. Oh yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not denying. It has been good. Love it. Oh dear. Yeah, Jeff Dunham, very funny. Hannah hates jingle bombs. Hannah just hates Ahmed, I think. I don't think it's yeah, she doesn't like Ahmed, but she doesn't like Crazy Frog either. Do you remember? It's not Crazy Frog, it's Axel F. <laughs> yeah, but she didn't yeah. like the character of Crazy Frog. <laughs> don't remember the name right now, but it says the story of the racist gift basket. The racist gift basket. Oh, 
Oh, that's um uh oh the oh it's it's the Hispanic guy. Um oh what's his name? I can see his face. Hang on, I'll Google it. I don't remember goodness gracious me and dead ringers. Never watched them. No, no, did I? Hold on a second. I will find the name of this this guy. Uh, Gabriel Iglesias. Uh, yep, Gabriel Iglesias. Yep. That is quite funny. And it's actually true as well. I'll have to look up that sketch. I don't know about it. Trust me, the racist gift basket, you, you will be in stitches. I might watch it after this. <laughs> I might watch it after this stream then. Okay. Speaking of after the stream, are you are you uh, heading towards half past nine with this? Well, I'm going to get to 400 stitches and I'm at... Uh, just mark off. Two thousand seventy one. What is that? How many you've done? Yeah. Well, two thousand seventy six now. Right. Peggy says sixty eight cross stitching, at least forty two years, self taught knitter and crocheted and a lefty. Silver Stitches, all of goodness gracious me, it was Indians making fun of our culture. Dead Ringers was an impressionist show. He didn't crop up for me, I'm afraid. I didn't watch him. I missed out quite a lot of TV in the 90s. Um... Because I was too busy working. The only program I watched with any regularity in the 90s was ER, the medical drama. Is that still about? No. No, no, no. Well, I think that, well, I suppose you've got things like Grey's Anatomy and Scrubs and shit, have not you? Well, you can watch every episode of ER on uh, More 4. I loved ER. You see, medical dramas, there's quite quite a lot of them and they're all kind of along the same lines aren't they well we had the two in the uk casualty and holby city i was gutted when holby city was cancelled and i don't really watch casualty i much preferred holby city has that not gone as well now no casualty is still going um I that had gone. but i i loved er eric lasalle oh Silver stitches, I can only do 200 stitches in two hours. How do you do so much in so little time? Uh, I think that's just the two-handed stitching. I think it's experienced as well, to be honest. And practice, yeah. Well, you've been at it for, like you said, quite a number of years. So I think it just comes with it. Yeah. Experience. I've only really been two-handed stitching properly, though, for maybe the last 10. We certainly seem to have managed to knock it up a notch and of course I can multitask <laughs> talk stitch mark off yeah, and all the rest read of yeah. <laughs> brilliant oh yes I quite like house as well I have Dr House on DVD if I want to be whacked with sarcasm he's the one yeah yeah I like house Theme music by Massive Attack. Covered by Newton. Indeed. 
This black is going in quite quickly today. <laughs> Seems to have got loads done. Mind you, by the time that this stream's over, I'll have, I'll have done 2,100 stitches today, which is not quite a record, but it's getting there for me. I think the most I've done in a day is like 2,400. I'm pretty sure I could sit up for another hour and just keep stitching, but I've got work tomorrow, so. I know you, Mickey. You would stitch all night if you have the chance. Oh my goodness, Silver Stitches. I was a kid in the 90s, so I watched shows like Red Dwarf. Way! Hey. Made Marion in there, Merry Men. Fun House, Spats, Press Gang, Children's Shows, Heavily Into Neighbours. Yeah, and Home and Away. We used to watch them. Just watch them when I had dinner break in school. If you watch Red Dwarf, that means I can officially call you a smeghead. <laughs> yeah, we love Red Dwarf in this house. We do. Coming back apparently again, Nikki. Is it? Yeah, so hey. the other day, there's another series in the works, which is good. I love that one where they did the went on Coronation Street set and they're going, get in the pee. People don't like that one. I I, I thought it was funny. That's back to earth, which people don't thought. Yeah. It was that was in where series nine should have been. And no one knows what happened in series nine because series nine never existed. Like the one of the biggest TV mysteries, that. <laughs> Pete Red Dwarf was uh, series six for me. Feeling a bit hungry. Mm. Oh, on the on the Red Dwarf theme, by the way, I've actually met uh, Norman Lovett and Hattie Hayridge. Yeah, both comedians in their own right. Hi, Lauren. Hi. Why did I hear Red Dwarf? Because we're talking about it on my live stream. Because it's cold outside. There's no kind of atmosphere. I've gone over 2,100. Right, I've done 2,106 stitches. So that is me ending this stream, I think, because I skippered. I've got, to go to, I've got to go to bed. I've got work tomorrow. But I've done loads today. I've done 400 stitches, what do you want? 406 to be precise, on this stream. Oh, my days. So I'm going to leave it there. What a wonderfully fun evening. Thank you all so very much for joining me. It's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, leave a thumbs up if you uh, haven't done so already. Oh, there's the cat waving goodbye. <laughs> leave a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Um, it'd be fantastic if you can. Just keep your eyes out for my videos and I'll update my floss tube this week. There might be some changes next week with scheduling. Um, but other than that, Take care, everyone. Thank you all so much indeed for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure. All right. Bye for now, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.